Welcome to Sabres Live. Hey, thank you. Nice thank to you. see you. I'm sure you've been watching the show every day, so uh-huh. you know all about it. You know, yeah. Don, Don purposely has practice set up right at that time, yes. so the, you know nobody ever has it's to It's in pay. the locker room, though, when they come off the yeah. ice. So. Uh, yeah. How are you doing as far as you know, just everything that has happened for you career-wise here in the last couple of months, the transition, the playoff race, the yeah. challenges that the team's going through? How are you feeling? You know what? Good. I mean, it was a... Uh, kind of been a crazy year for me obviously with going and moving from chicago to van and then van here but uh it's been exciting obviously we haven't uh been the direction that we've gone in the last little bit we we obviously wanted to put together some more wins but i think we have such a good group and and a good identity as a group that Mm -hmm. uh it'll come and resolve itself i think we we're coming in the right direction we just need to keep going i know you guys are wearing the goat head the red and black jersey tonight you really took it another level because you're wearing all black today yeah. but as i'm looking at you the corner of your left <laughs> eye is very red uh, how yeah. is that feeling is it because i'm looking at it, i'm like holy moly like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It, it does that bother you or is it fine no it's all good it's just some of the blood that drained in there from the fight a couple of weeks ago but yeah. uh no all, all feels good on that front it kind of fits the picture of the, uh, yeah, of, the, of, gear. the of the gear for yeah. today for sure and, and the logo right like the red yeah, eye, the red yeah. eye yeah. exactly 100%. No, I, I, and i hey we're on the topic and i I really did want to go down this path with you. What is it like in that moment when you're with a new team and you just choose to stand up and take on that kind of challenge? And, I mean, it's not something you're foreign to through the course of your career, but there has to be something about it when it's new and you're the new guy in town. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely something about it. It's a piece of me. It's a part of me. Obviously, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm the toughest guy, but I'm more than willing. And, and the way the game was going, and at that time, it was the right time to do it to to kind of end all the little stuff after the whistle and stuff was a way to put that away, keep keep hands off our, our top guys like dolls and stuff like that. So uh, to me, it felt like the right time. Obviously, uh, it, it didn't necessarily go the way I wanted it to go. But you know what? That happens. That's part of the game, and, and that's how it goes. I'm 0-1 in my career, so I don't have a win in any fights that I've taken part of, so I can't say anything about it. Uh, but you mentioned a couple of organizations coming over to Buffalo, new with the team, new with the structure, the system. How is that like? Like, is, is Are the systems different from team to team? Is there big changes, or they all kind of fit the same? It's just a matter of adjusting to a, a, a teammate, a D partner, and, and the way teams play? I think there's adjustments all over. I think at the end of the day, it's one of those things where uh, the symptom, the systems are relatively similar all over across the board in the NHL. Um, obviously, we play a little bit different style here, so it takes some adjustments to get into the habits that we have here. Uh, and then getting used to your D partner. Obviously, Bush and I were going well there for a while. Um, and getting those adjustments and just getting comfortable with that and, and finding my game inside that to, to help move the process forward. One of the things I noticed, sorry, Duffer, is that like Don has talked about it a lot the last couple of years, about how you defend not just by skating backwards, mm-hmm. right? How you guys as D partners, you know, you'll come across skating forward and angle a, a team, a, a team coming in on their breakout or neutral zone. Is that something that's done other places? Is that something that's been changing in the position of a defenseman now, skating more forwards and angling as opposed to just straight backing up and skating backwards? Yeah, I think the game's changed a little bit in that sense. You look at Chicago and all those cup runs in, in 10, 13, 15, with Duncan Keith, he was always yeah. skating forwards. Yeah. And I think that's something that can be very effective to kill plays early, to get in their face, to and, and not necessarily you're not necessarily running over people or stopping plays right there, but then you have the guy, he has to chip it, he's on your back. It allows more space to go in and cleaner exits out of your zone. So I think it's something that you're seeing more and more around the league and, and is exciting to as a player. It allows me to be up and in, a, in their face all the time as the puck's coming towards me. So how would you say you're tweaking that right now based on the recent results and you don't want to change your identity and how you guys play completely, but where where are the little fine details within that to make you guys a little better defensively starting tonight? I, I think tonight is just the, the assertiveness. When you have an opportunity like you uh, we, we look in the last couple of games, everybody's right there. It's just that little bit extra will to, to get a job done or, or to block a shot or get a stick-up block. It's like we're right there and, and we're in the right spot. It's just a matter of that will to, to negate those things. And I think that's something that we need to start doing moving forward. And, and, and that starts tonight. Did you hang out around the locker room a lot as a kid, like with your oh. dad? Like, I mean, Corey Stillman, for those who don't know, he wore number 61 with yeah. the Hurricanes as well. So number 61 here is you. Um I did play against him. Um, he played a 
mean game. Like, he was always in my face, and I hated him <laughs> for that. But, no, did you hang out around the locker room, playing mini sticks, like, just create havoc in the locker rooms? I, I, I was there every day that I possibly could. And some days that I, when I wasn't, wasn't, shouldn't have been there, I was I was like, hey, Dad, I, I need to, can I come to the rink? Can I come yeah. to the rink? And finally he'd cave, and he'd be like, hey, I don't want to see you today. So I'd be in the back folding towels with the trainers or <laughs> – or doing stuff that way because I just I generally even still to this day I love coming to the rink I love being at the rink I love being around the guys and the trainers and stuff like that it's my happy place and, and that started when I was a kid coming to the rink with him you ever get in trouble because I'm saying that because <laughs> my kid got yelled at by John Tortorella and then Torts called later the house to apologize it was playoff hockey and my kid was doing things he shouldn't have been doing but anyway <laughs> ever got in trouble with a coach or anybody uh, not when I was a kid I, I did a good job of staying out of the way there was definitely times where maybe mini sticks got a little too aggressive me the truck boys in st louis there or there was there was a lot a lot of things that had gone that way maybe we were making too much noise but not not that i can remember off the top of my head no okay why good, does it good. always come back to the kachucks can you imagine that i know seriously it's like those guys used to run the locker room right, right? Yeah. Like, exactly uh best attribute of each of your parents best attribute of each of my parents uh ooh, that's a tough question uh Obviously, I would say my mom's is just her ability to, to take care of us and take care of the house, and, and she controls, she makes sure everything spins. She's like the engine that keeps going, right? She's always been the one that's there for us from the time I was a little kid all the way through to now to making everything run like a well-oiled machine. I would say that's her best attribute is she's a leader. She's our rock for everything, and we owe her a lot for that. And then obviously, best attribute of my dad, <laughs> there's a lot of that I can go there. I think... Uh, his honesty and his ability to just be himself and, and tell you what you need to hear at a time. He, he is a true leader, and I think that's something that true leaders are good at where they give their what what they believe in every day. So Yeah, that's, that's really important. Um, who do you rely on? Like, I know you have your coaches, but, you know, some people, it's a friend, a high school buddy, an agent. Like, who's the one person after a game that – um, good game, bad game, you'll be like, I need to text and I need to, to get a feedback from? Uh, I think there's a couple different avenues you go there. I mean, obviously my dad is a big part of that yep. for me. Uh, my grandfather played as well, okay, so I lean yeah. on him quite a bit. And then uh, I think a good good way to keep me on an even keel is I work with a mental skills coach to okay. go about that way. I talk to him almost every day, how things are going, how my day is going, what kind of headspace I'm in, given that position or what happened in the game today, and then we kind of work it out that way. So I think... Uh, those are the three avenues that I go that way. A lot, a lot of players use like now you have nutritionists. It yeah. used to be just a, a trainer, like a yeah. workout person, and you train your body to be strong. But there's a lot more uh, that that comes into play. So, um, would you say that most players have a mental skills coach, or it's getting to that place now? I think it's getting to that place now. I'm not sure. It, it's kind of one of those things where. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how what everyone uses or yep. what works that way, but I was told when I was young that the game's 90% mental, mm -hmm. right? I mean, obviously now everyone's at the, almost on part of the same physical capabilities yep. across the board. Everyone's in shape, coming to training camp. There's no, there's no being out of shape. That's just not okay. That just doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. I saw guys coming in 25% body fat. That doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> that doesn't happen anymore. You not Rob Ray. <laughs> Let's not mention Razor. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> So I think with the game being 90% mental, it's such a huge part of the game to, to allow yourself to get in that headspace. Whether things go good, okay, you're never too high, or things yeah. are going bad, okay, i got to park it and move on. But I think that's a huge piece for me. We, I'm glad you brought that up. We had uh, Eric Hewson from Same Here Global, which is a mental health organization, not-for-profit. He joined us on the, pre, on the intermission the other night, yeah. and you know they work with a lot of athletes. But, again, it's more just creating the openness of – it's okay to get out there and talk about everything. And, and so you bringing that up, I'm, 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 I'm curious, like when, when you talk to the person that you talk with, is it different every time or do you kind of follow a pattern to kind of keep you in the right place? If like, if you, if you can talk about it a little bit, like how, how that helps you on a daily basis, what, what allows you to kind of get reset with him? I, I think it's one of those things where it's a little bit of everything. Obviously, there's some repetitiveness. There's some things that you're constantly going over and constantly working on. But I think the big thing is growth. Uh, growth sorry. Uh, in order to do that, you have to be in a position where you're uncomfortable. That, that's the only thing that drives results in, in, that, in that space, Looking at whether that's just looking at things from a different light. Um, 
but I think that's we're always trying to do different things. Obviously, there's things we come back to, but trying to push to become a better person every day and a better player and all that stuff, and that forces you to be put yourself in uncomfortable positions for growth. Are you in a hotel? What's the living arrangement now? Like, I mean, that's yeah. not easy. That's another thing people don't no. realize. You get traded, you know, you um, – I don't remember who I heard on an interview yesterday saying they spend one day in the hotel. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, when I got traded to Philly, I spent, like, three weeks in a bad hotel, too. So <laughs> I didn't like it. But, no, what's uh, what's it like for you now, uh, living arrangements and all? Uh, I've been in a hotel. I'll probably finished the year out in a hotel here uh, yeah. this year just because – with what's going on and then getting in the playoffs it's just something i didn't want to be worried about looking for a place to live or anything like yep. that i just wanted to focus on hockey and playing so it's a little different living in a hotel full-time but uh over the course of my career i've been a little bit adjusted to hotel life my marriott points are pretty good to say the least so uh <laughs> Uh, I, you know what, it's it is fine. It's a place to sleep for me. I spend as much time as I can at the rink every yeah. day. Uh, like I said earlier, I just love being at the rink, so all I needed is a place to sleep. And where are your summer roots? Summer roots are in Peterborough. I'm nice. a Peterborough boy. Uh, so we're on the lake? Cottage. Yeah. On the Corthus? In the Corthus there, yeah. I love yeah. to hunt and fish and do all that stuff. So I think my, my summer routine revolves around get up, work out, and then try and enjoy the day on the water. Or get I, up, work out, skate, water. I right. drove through Peterborough for the first time about a month ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, w- once you go past Peterborough and you're going north, oh yeah, like no <laughs> cell reception, you're on your own. You well, are with nature, and well, that's it. That, and, and, and that's the that's place for me to be. That's the place <laughs> I love. I always said when, when everything comes to an end, whenever day that is for me, I'll be on a farm somewhere up there, and that'll be the route for me. Fabulous. That's great awesome. to great to finally have you on the show. And, uh, best thank of luck you. tonight. Hey, thank, thank you, Riley. You. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Now you can go back either to your hotel room or back to the locker room, whichever place you want to go. We'll see what happens. Might need a nap today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely.